Hey everybody, welcome to the Todd and Aaron Daily Stream. Uh, today we have advice coming up. Oh, Dr. Julie Hanks, who is a genius, and she's going to tell you how to stop Thanksgiving dinner fights with a single sentence. Because you know there's somebody, creepy Uncle Bob, somebody's going to get started and then it's all over. One sentence. But first, take something to a party that people will question. Sometimes my goal is to take food to a party and have people say, What the hell is that? That's my goal today. This is something I have never seen ever in my entire life. Let's go over the ingredients really fast and tell me if you can guess what it is. Okay, first of all, we have some cream cheese. We have 12 ounces of cranberries. We have jalapenos. We have a cup of sugar. We have two, ta uh, two tablespoons of limes. That's gonna happen. A pinch of salt. That's over here uh, and the cream cheese. Now what we're making is a dip. The cumin, did I mention the cumin? We need we need some cumin in there, that's half a teaspoon. Cumin, if you don't have cumin, because cumin has this really earthy uh, flavor to it, just put some dirt in. That's that's what I do, It's it works. Um, so the first thing I need to do is to pull out my food processor, which I have my food processor, um, but I haven't found the blades for the last three years. So what I'm going to do, this is 12 ounces of cranberries. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to be using my knife skills on round objects, which means my dog, like that, is going to be sick on cranberries. So I'm going to chop this up and I'm going to de-seed a jalapeno and get that all diced up too and we're going to put the mess together. Step one. That was a good 25 minutes uh, by knife uh, for this. Uh, if you don't have a Cuisinart, don't make this. Just go to the store and get a vegetable tray. This is like herding cats. There's probably 20 cranberries on the floor. And if you can cut them, get them cut in half, they sit, you know, and then you can do your thing. But that was a lot. Call your friend who has a Cuisinart with the blades and go over to their house. All right, so there's going to be a, a time where I can rest here because I'll show you what we do. So let me make sure that's good. Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> so what we're going to do now is we're going to put in the jalapeno. And it says just one. And because my family's not huge on this, I'm just gonna put in one. Took the seeds out, that's kind of important. So that's chopped up to the same deal. I'll say I'm going to put in uh, one cup of sugar. One cup of sugar. Let's see, uh, tablespoons. Okay, two tablespoons of lime juice. So, figure. Probably three of these. And there's nothing I'm going to do with this, so I'm going to put it into. All right. And uh, cumin, cumin. Um, if you don't have it, dirt works, like I said. And do uh, half a teaspoon, half a teaspoon, half a teaspoon. That's close. All right. Now, I'm going to mix this up, and then we are going to... Put it in the refrigerator for two hours. When we put this whole thing together, it goes back in the refrigerator overnight or for at least six hours to get everything to blend. Oh, pinch, pinch of salt here. Pinch of salt. And that's all the ingredients. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to take this and we're going to... Have you made this before? I've never even seen this before. I saw it online and I said, I have to make this. And uh, one of you made it and sent me the pictures on Facebook. And she said they loved it. They actually had the leftovers for breakfast the next morning. So you know it's good. All right. Good to go? Good to go. All right. In the freezer, no freezer, in the refrigerator for two hours. 
All right, it's out of the uh, the refrigerator. It's been in there for two hours, and now we have the cream cheese uh, on the bottom of. I'm going to use a pie a pie pan here, and all you do on this step is to kind of give it the old step, and then just smooth it out. Now this part I was worried about was that part. But the juice is part of it. So don't be afraid to leave it in there. I was going to strain it out. But you're supposed to leave it in. All right. Now. Now it's going to go back in the refrigerator. Pretty? Pretty. For another four to six hours. So just basically overnight. I've noticed something though. The cream cheese, when it's in the fridge, sets up really hard. So you're going to need some sturdy crackers. But once again, you walk in like this, people are like, what the hell is that? And it's a dip. And so we're going to find out. Um, uh, it's six hours. There it is. I love this. I know, right? Why does this again explain it to me? Oh, well, I was just... Looking for something that if you brought to a party, I told them already. It was bright and colorful. No, they go, what cool. the hell is that? So here it is. <laughs> and you've seen, you've seen the whole recipe, so now it's just time to taste. Now you picked up the crackers. Yeah, you told me to get strong crackers. I got like the wheat thin. No, I mean the So whatever this things. is what we got. You want to get me some, a spoon? Yeah, see, this came out of the refrigerator, so at room temperature it would be soft. So um, instead, oh look. Christmas injury already. It's not even Thanksgiving. That's really decorations. Sad, All right, hang okay. on, hang on. We gotta do this together. So a little cream cheese. So what's in this again? They've already seen this whole thing. Here we go. Well, what does it matter if I know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We make too much noise when we eat on the microphone. I love it. You don't like jalapenos that much. I would have put more in. I hate jalapenos, but that is really good. Because if you didn't have them, it would be too sweet. But it's like just the right bite. This is, I will eat the rest of this once I get correct crackers. That's really good. So anyway, so there's another idea. Changing my crackers. How long did this make take to make total? Well, as I saw, the cranberry chopping, really. Forgive me. I was helping our daughter with her homework that I wasn't here for you. But everyone. if you have a Cuisinart, it goes like this. And you're done. So for me, a little bit longer. So there you go. That's really uh, I'm going to call it the uh, cranberry jalapeno cream cheese surprise. And uh, there that you go. That kind of gives it all away, though. Hope it's not it, really a surprise then, is it? Hope it works for the holidays. Mm. Hey, thanks for watching the podcast. Uh, is there anything that YouTube cannot teach me? I have fixed the the washing machine. I have fixed the dishwasher. I have fixed the lights on the car. You learned how to lay tile. You figured tile. out yeah, everything. All these crazy things. And then um, I have an external hard drive. You know how important those are. That's where all your stuff goes. Your entire life, all the baby a pictures. A terabyte. That's mm -hmm. like this big. A terabyte that used to be big deal. Big deal terabyte now they have like um uh, three three terabytes that come in the size of a sugar cube but but anyway so it's got all my stuff right everything all the family stuff everything it stops working you I, were freaking out i was like there was freaking out this is everything i mean i keep this in a separate building in case the house burns down kind of safety you know and so it won't start it won't it won't gear up it's nothing's working i go on youtube and they said okay they said first of all right off the bat don't do this and i went okay let's go to step two step two was open up the open up I the, the box was stop crying and then open three no open up the no box. get okay. a drink get a drink okay uh, mm -hmm. number two is how to open the the, the unit and then you get that and then you get the hard drive out and you unplug the hard drive once again they say don't do this because usually done in a dust-free environment, you're wearing a hazmat suit and everybody's been dusted off and all this stuff. Then you open it up and there it is, the disc. I forget what they call it. 
The disc of destiny. And there's an arm like a record player, right? You bring the arm over, you bring the arm over, you put really? it on the edge of the radio, on the record, and it goes around counterclockwise. The arm was stuck. And so, oh. with a screwdriver, a pair of tweezers, I turned it and pulled it back in place. And then I put it all back together and it worked. That is the weirdest thing ever. And I let I lost less than 1% of data one percent which i'm it was our wedding with. pictures wasn't it it was Might probably as well our and i can't remember sense. it anyway so so the, the point is is that now i have to because it's i can't trust it anymore now i have to get a backup for my backup mm -hmm. it's a relentless circle it really is there is nothing safe in this world no i just wanted to point that out i'm sorry all right but i'm very proud of you for doing that all right shop locally this has been the todd Nair shop locally guide where we've been finding all these people who create amazing stuff here or they run their own stores or they're like plucky you know like single moms building an empire but the cool thing is is that when you buy a gift from them you've got like a story behind it yeah you know it comes from somebody local and you've you know supported our economy and no no one's ever going to have the advertising budget of target but we want to put these people in front of you so when you're shopping you're like hey that could be cool i got this for you i got it at target it's a mm. large huge company doesn't even know this exists. We're not ripping on Target, but you know what I mean. I know. Utah DIY Wedding. Now, this is run by Kathy Christian, one of our favorite people. And she went, weddings shouldn't have to be like 20 grand to right. get stuff put together. So for $395, she will give you a main backdrop, signs, wine barrels, or vintage buffet, entry decor, Keeps sign going. in, Keeps going. Uh, and cards and gift decor, centerpieces, cake barrel, table and decor, food serving and display pieces, beverage serving items, memory table decor, favors decor, what? send off decor, $395. Now here's Are the cool thing. For a wedding. Yeah, so you go down to her gigantic warehouse and they have all different <laughs> styles. There's like boho and vintage and elegant and rustic. Stick Western. And, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. really cool stuff. So this is the fun thing. She's doing small business Saturday, this Saturday. And if you want to go down and get signed up, she's giving away a um, $125 gift card to go towards um, your wedding. But if you know you're getting married sometime this year, get the package now while it's a really good deal. Right. Yeah. Now she's at um, 1302 West Utah Avenue in Payson, Utah. It's small business Saturday, food and drinks. It's going to be really fun. You can wander through and look at all the cool stuff. But just go to Utah DIY Weddings on Facebook and she'll have all the information there. Everything you need except a couple. That's all. That's all you have to add. I actually had one father go, you know, I probably wouldn't even encourage them to elope because I could actually afford this. You know, a good ladder is like $2.95. Yeah, right? right? So really, you're saving money if you think about it. All right, so we went um, uh, we went and saw um, Frozen 2. Oh, that was very cool. Frozen 2. Um, um, what did I think? I thought it was very good. No, I... Disney's evil and they always make me cry. So I spent half the time crying from the songs and Zoe wouldn't even sit next to me anymore. I was wondering why your popcorn was so salty. Oh, that's so sweet. But anyway, I love Kristen Bell. She was in Frozen 2, and she's been kind of parlaying some of the big push with the publicity into a project of hers, and I'm so in love with her for she's this. She's been everywhere recently. Now, she's precious and adorable, and she's a buttercup in every way, but she's been doing something on her Instagram page, and I've noticed she's mentioned it a couple of times in her Frozen 2 interviews, which I love about what her. What is it? Um, it's been something she's done for teachers where she's like, write in, you know, nominate a teacher. And some of the stories have been incredible. There was a teacher in Flint, Michigan, first grade, and they said, here's your classroom. You've got 40 kids coming in today. And she had like five desks and some chairs. And she was like... For how many? 40 kids. Oh, she man. was like, what, what? And so her friend had nominated her and she started getting packages from all over the country and all over the, she got stuff like from what? Bangladesh. She got stuff from Bangladesh? She got books. She got, she got office, you know, school supplies. She got new desks. Oh she got gosh. more chairs. She got, somebody sent her a smart board. I mean, all this incredible stuff. And then of course, Christian donates too, but she's been doing this now for over a year and hundreds of teachers have been getting everything they needed to teach. Oh my gosh, that's so thought, cool. That is like the most logical, awesome thing ever. You know, who, who can you best help that's going to help the most people at once? And if right. you think about it, who's better than teachers? No, that's great. And and if you know any teachers, if you're watching this on the day that we made this, um, we have a Thursday is Thanksgiving. Um, and so you have how many days left? Uh, and But the teachers only have two days. Two days of school in a week. Which makes teachers very happy. Because, you know what, though? Because the children are like animals. Look at Zoe. They're all like, I don't care. I'm not going to learn anything. Think about happy they are compared to how happy you are during Christmas vacation. 
You can nominate a teacher if you want to go to oh, Kristen Bell's sorry. Instagram, and then you can nominate one there. All right. But I just thought that was such a cool... I mean, how adorable can she be? Yes, she is, she is, and she can sing. And just the fact that she kind of edges it in under this massive Disney conglomerate movie, and she's like, hey, I've got this oh, teacher thing. by the way, yeah. go to my website. Right. Okay, the latest one that I've really been excited about for uh, Shop Locally mm -hmm. is Jay, is, is Willow and Jay. Now, at Willow and Jay Boutique, and this was started by a couple of moms who are like, I don't have time to do any shopping. And so they came up with this really cool online boutique with all this adorable stuff that you won't see on 47 other women at the PTA meeting. Right. But what I really love most about them is they have a ton of plus size stuff. Because let's face it. Everybody I know is plus size now, according to the fashion industry. So right. they've got this huge array of stuff that, that everybody can wear. It's super cute. And they're doing a Black Friday sale that has already started. 80% off. Tons of stuff. 80%? Up to 80% off a ton of stuff. But the thing that's really cool, they've got mix and match on these adorable booties that have like little, little fake fur cuffs. Yeah. And you get to wear them in the house and they're really sturdy. They've got mittens and hats and all these adorable things. And you can mix and match those two for 15. So they're really good stocking stuffers. Right, right. But go take a look at the clothes, the, like the dresses and the leggings. And there's some really cute tunics. But just go to willowandj.com. That's willowandj.com. And you can also go to their Facebook page and see a ton of stuff there too. All right. Very good. And it's local. So yeah. it makes more sense. Once again, sense. it's two Utah, three um, Utah moms that just went, I can't have time to shop. Anymore. I don't know why this person is friends with us. This I know. She's, Julie Hanks. She's very well educated and she's elegant. She's got lots of initials after her name as titles. Why does uh, she even admit she knows us? I don't know, but she's mm -hmm. a, what is what is her job ex description? Well, aside from being impossibly beautiful and talented, uh, Dr. Julie Diazabato Hanks right. is, is an incredible family therapist. Right. And she actually has a group that she runs that specializes in family therapy. Right, right. All kinds of great information on the website. But one of the things that she does the best at is, is that difficult situations. But how do you raise children like this? Or how do you do this? How do you do that? She, when there, but there's tough questions. We always go to her. And one of the big ones is always Thanksgiving. You're going to have the most people over from the family, maybe assorted friends. This applies to Christmas as well. And there's always going to be somebody that starts it. And, yeah. you know, they open their may mouth. I say, may I say? Yeah. Um, um, hey, you want to see my gun? There's one. Hey, I think your sister's hot. Uh, yeah, that's a good start. <laughs> here's another one. Where's all the booze? Is that it? The other one is, hey, Granny. Who are you going to vote for? That That's a death I word. dare you to shoot me. <laughs> All right, so these are what? Yeah, so, these are shutdowns, right? Now, well, this is the thing that she's got. She's got one sentence that will shut down every argument. So you see it starting. You see it about ready to blow up. One sentence, and it's over, and everyone actually gets to enjoy Thanksgiving. I thought it was, I have a gun. Well, but, you would okay. think so, but this one's probably safer. Dr. Hanks. I don't think I have ever seen so much, like, genuine hatred between families until the political arena in the last few years. And no matter who you're voting for, and at this point, I... I don't care, and not only that, I don't want to know because it will just make it worse. Yeah. I have never seen so much anger between families. I mean, genuine rage. This isn't even bringing up old hurts from the past. This is, this if is you current. like this person, you should die. And I've got, you know, I've got the fork that was stuck in the turkey, and I'm coming for you. Mm -hmm. When did it come into this kind of like crazy rage between families, and why at the holidays? <sighs> the holidays, every, everyone's under slept, overfed, over sugared. Right? It's like the worst, we're all like in our worst self. <laughs> I'm buzzing and I'm tired. And then st stressed out. <laughs> so it's kind of a bad combination to get people together, first of all. But the political landscape the last couple of years has been so divisive. I mean, it, it really has. And there's a book called The Righteous Mind. And he, he talks, I forget the author's name, but he talks about how we make political and religious decisions based on how we feel. And then we find facts to back up how we feel. But Interesting. it's an emotional thing. Interesting. And that's why the conversations, I think, get so heated because it's it's hitting us emotionally in our core. It's not we think we're debating facts, but we're not. You're questioning my self worth now. Right. So, yeah. Right. My intellect. Per, it's more personal. Interesting. It's my core um, values or, or feelings. And so I think that's why it becomes so volatile. But I I say for the holidays you know, cut off those conversations. I say frequently to family members, you know, I'm just not interested in having this conversation right now. How can you as the hostess or an outsider 
going, this is gonna explode. How do yeah. you intervene and get it down? Yeah, well, I think you could just say, hey, you know what? I'm starting to feel really uncomfortable. I'm concerned this is, I mean, you say that, I'm, I'm concerned this is gonna get out of hand. Can we dial it back? And these are hard things to say because you're actually stepping outside of the social norm and going, I'm addressing what's happening right. here instead and of pretending, in the room. yeah, pretending it's fine, which yeah. is what we always do. Right. Or we like, okay, dessert, dessert, right? Distraction. But, but go toward the awkward. We tend to go away from it, but if you mm -hmm. go toward it, it usually works out better. So it's awkward. It's like, oh, this is going to escalate. Go toward it. You know what? This seems like it's escalating. <laughs> I'm, I'm really worried that this is going to ruin our dinner. Can we, you know, tone it down? Um, so obviously political is a big thing. It's always been there. Another one that I've always found interesting uh, that my dad, who is also in mental health, laughed at constantly is that we all instantly assume the roles that we had in the family as children. Mine was being crazy, which is probably not too surprising to you, although I am now the diplomat in the family. But how, why do we automatically go, I'm going to become a five-year-old again? What happens to us? We're you thinking know, adults. I know. We, when we get in that dynamic, it's so powerful because that, that family dynamic was what formed us. It's the most familiar thing to us. And so it makes perfect sense that we just go back to that familiar place where people play the role that everybody expects them to. And yeah, it happens with all families. Um, I think being conscious of it is really important to go, oh, I'm not crazy, you know, <laughs> or I'm not the baby. Well, that still could be happening, but we're not going to, you know, I'm trying not to bring it up at Thanksgiving, but yeah. Or like, I don't have to be the peacemaker anymore, or I don't have to be the scapegoat, or I don't have to be the, the baby, and you know, whatever your role is, making it explicit to yourself, so I, and kind of reclaiming your adult self in that family system. Maybe it's something we could prepare for a little bit in advance. Like I said, I've had enough time and enough therapy to, to go, oh, this is my, that was my job. That's good. Yeah. But for people who maybe don't know and they just sort of go into it mindlessly, but then they come up feeling terrible, mm -hmm. how, do you how do you kind of analyze the dynamic before you get into it? Is, are there some steps that you can take that make you remember that, no, you're an adult and you have value? And what should you do? Yeah, well, I think just being able to name things is powerful. So, you know, ask yourself, Okay, if I were to give my role a label, what would it be? The perfect child, the jock, the scapegoat, the, you know, how, what would that label be? And then what would you like it to be as a grown adult? So when you go into that situation and people start treating you the way they would have treated you as a child, mm -hmm. how do you change it? How do you handle the dynamic? So you don't respond like you would have when you were a child. Which is so hard. You respond from the responsible adult place in you, right? The, the, who you want to be and who you are. Uh, but when you don't respond in a predictable pattern, it breaks the cycle, it breaks that pattern. So smart, and then they're all shocked. And they're like, whoa, she's yeah. grown up. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you want me to or not, give me the stuffing. Um, so. You know, it, one of the hardest things I think about coming back home for a lot of people is just reliving some of the old hurts or some of, there's going to be one person you look at and I've had friends who've told me stories that I'm like, you don't have to go home, but that's a topic for another time. Mm -hmm. But you're home and there's going to be somebody there that was awful. Maybe it was your dad. Maybe it was a, whoever it is. Yeah. This is going to bring up really hard feelings for you, but you don't want to lose the rest of your family. How do you handle the really painful part of coming yeah. back? Well, I think having somebody to talk to about it, so if you have a partner, if you have a best friend, being able to process it can be really helpful. Like beforehand, saying, you know what, I'm worried about this, I, let me talk through it, and then kind of debrief afterward too, saying, okay, here's what came up for me, um, I, I felt really powerless My, you know, when I saw my brother who abused me, or, I mean, horrible things happen in families, right? And And we still, we still get together and, and try to work it out. But processing it out loud with someone else can be really helpful. This is not necessarily a plug, but it's actually a really good time to ask because my greatest fear in the world for people going into uh, fine mental health professionals because I, I know that there's a few that I feel safe recommending. Can you give uh, your, your Wasatch Family Therapy, can you explain uh, how they could reach you or they could reach one of the professionals here? Because this is probably a really good time, even if you want like a refresher mm -hmm. to yeah, maybe ask to if check you... check in. Yeah. 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 So WasatchFamilyTherapy.com is our website mm -hmm. and our phone number is 801 
944-4555. Okay, and so you have, you have a, a clinic here on holiday. You have one up in Bountiful, so you're nicely sort of in the middle located so they could come by and get some check-ins and yeah, see how they're doing. We also have a blog that we update weekly, so there are a lot of resources. Um, just You can also search holidays and find some holiday articles. <laughs> All right, so wasatchfamilytherapy.com. Uh -huh. Okay, and so yeah, we've talked about then kind of how to diffuse stuff at the dinner table, even if you're the one who has to step in from outside. And the magic phrase again is, I really don't. I'm just not interested in talking about this right now. <laughs> Thank you. I'm writing it down on my phone. Okay. I'm not being subtle here. And then dealing with people that maybe have been hard for you. Um, the What else can we do to make it happy, better, because there's so many things that obviously bound us together as a family, so many right. good memories. Are there things that we can bring up, think, props we can use, ways that we could redirect attention that would make people remember why we loved each other? You know, something that's, I, that's really can bring up some poignant and fun and uh, um, memories is watching old videos or looking through old pictures and reminiscing together. So sometimes we do that alone, like looking through a scrapbook or whatever. But but doing that as a group and talking about, remember that trip we took? or um, That can refresh us. Like, oh, the joy. Yes, that, that was so fun. We did like each other. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, so that can be a really fun thing to do. Um, to, or just asking you, what, what are your favorite, favorite memories of childhood? We actually do that at birthdays when people in my family have a birthday mm -hmm. we go around and say what's our what our favorite memory is of that person uh, but it's really a tender sweet thing we do that too do that. I love that because you're right the things that people remember are so unusual and so surprising yeah that's I love that um does the hokey old things I'm grateful for at Thanksgiving really work trying to make yeah. people drag that in yeah it it really does um you can Never be grateful enough, right? <laughs> or practice <laughs> gratitude. It's a, it's a practice. Practicing gratitude, and this is a great time of year to do that. Okay, and then the one last question I wanted to ask is, it goes kind of back to family roles, but um, this goes back to my childhood where the women would cook and the guys would watch football, and then the women would start washing dishes, and, you know, I would get to an age where I'm like, oh, my God, Aunt Charlene, go sit down, it, you know, and I would go after the turkey basters and the big, horrible roasting pans, but is there a way to break out of some of those roles? Because I see a lot of resentment with friends of, well, I always have to be the one who cleans up, or they never do anything, and it's my group that has to do this because it's always been that way. Right. Is there a way to address that beforehand so that that resentment, those old resentments don't keep coming back up? Yeah, that's a great question. So giving assignments ahead of time. So, okay, all, you know, the adult men, you guys are on the cleanup crew. That's going to involve some cooking. shock and consternation. <laughs> right. But, and setting boundaries and saying, you know, if you're not willing to do that, I'm not willing to cook. So you either cook or clean up which one. And kind of negotiating. Um, the thing that drives me crazy is when people act like a martyr, but they don't set any boundaries. <laughs> so mm -hmm. True. It's like, oh, poor me. It's like, well, set some boundaries. Set some boundaries. No, I'd rather Ask. just wash dishes till 2 o'clock in the morning because nobody <laughs> loves me. And cry. I mean, the expectation traditionally has been women do the cooking and cleaning. And hello, 2018, right? It's If you haven't already challenged that, it's time to challenge it. I love that. Okay, so assignments for everybody and mm -hmm. well beforehand so there's no true shock the day of that, oh, my God, I didn't realize I'd actually have to look at a dishwasher. Yeah. I love it. That's perfect. Any final things, any thoughts about about traveling back? Because there's a compulsion. We all do it. And it's not just duty. It's because we want to be close again. But yeah. it's, you know, the, the anxiety that, that can really taint it. Any final advice? Yeah. Whatever you're feeling, like acknowledge it and then move through it. it. We have this expectation that holidays are just supposed to be all positive and they're not. They're just not sometimes. So it's okay. Um, you don't have to be depressed about the fact that it's not perfect or it's not always happy. So if, if feelings come up, feel them and then move forward.